أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد من يلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Once again, uh, we were here yesterday and, and we talked about revivalism and, and uh, uh, Islam. Today, I want again to thank the uh, Islamic Renaissance Front for inviting me and together with the Islamic Books uh, Trust, inviting me here uh, to Kuala Lumpur. First, uh, for sharing views and experiences and, and it was a, a honor for me to be invited to to pay tribute to Muhammad Assad, rahimahullah. Uh, for many reasons, I will come to this, but uh, thank you for that. And, and really, I think it's an important, uh, um, important uh, acknowledgement of a, a, a legacy. And also, as it was said by Professor uh, Hassan, I think it's quite important always to come back to what the people or what the scholars what uh, uh, great, great uh, uh, characters in, in, in our history uh, uh, thought and provided us with, but also to put things into context and to try to understand what could be useful for us. So in fact, by what you were just doing before me, it's really the right way to put it, because I think that the overall uh, approach that you presented first uh, uh, through the message of the Quran and then through the, the, the world view of Muhammad Assad, uh, it's quite important. So let me, let me follow, in fact, and, and just uh, share with you some of uh, the main ideas that I think are important for us, because at the end of the day, to pay tribute to us, to acknowledge the fact that he gave something, but also for us to be able to translate this for our own time and, and in which way we are dealing with this thought and, and why and how this uh, contribution is important for us. Um, uh, when I was young, you know, I'm the, 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 the youngest uh, uh, son in the family and uh, I met uh, 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 Muhammad Assad and he was very close to my uh, father for years, till the end, in fact, and when they started to republish his books, uh, my father was at the forefront of uh, uh, this endeavor, saying, we need to do this. It's so important what he uh, produced and what he thought that we need to do this, because it was difficult at one point. It was difficult for Muhammad Assad to find a way to be heard by the, the Muslims in the Muslim-majority countries, but also in the West. Uh, um, even his uh, uh, translation of the, the, the Quran was not uh, received by some Islamic authorities as something which is uh, without discussion. It was criticized for many reasons and, and some of the points that he was making. So uh, uh, this is something which is also important. Uh, at the beginning, they pointed out that some of this translation understanding were even non-Islamic. And you should know that in his life, coming from the Jewish tradition and providing Muslims with critical thinking, as it was said, he sometimes heard from Muslims. And I want you to remember this, because this is our weakness. This is something which is unacceptable among Muslims. That at one point when people were disagreeing with him, they said, and scholars and authorities, Never forget that he was a Jew. <laughs> no, don't laugh. Don't laugh. It's unacceptable. If in a, it's unacceptable when you disagree with someone to come back to, oh, be careful, dangerous. To remind someone of his past, to criticize his thoughts, this is not acceptable. No one can judge the heart of someone because he or she disagrees with the mind and the thoughts. Let us take this as something which is crucial for us. Because I can tell you something that today in the Muslim majority countries as well as Muslims living in the West, I, I'm, I'm just facing this attitude, this intellectual attitude that is unacceptable from Muslims 
because they don't know how to deal with thoughts and they are not ready to critical thinking that they are targeting the being of the people saying, oh, who are you? And I think that the starting point of this, we are very happy when we agree with someone, you know what, he was a Jew. But when we disagree, you know what, be careful, he was a Jew. <laughs> Emotional attitudes that are unacceptable. And by the way, anti-Semitism in Islam is anti-Islamic. We don't have anything to do with anti-Semitism. We may be critical of the state, as we should be critical to any state in the world, even the Muslim majority countries' governments, but there is nothing called anti-Semitism which is accepted in Islam. And when we have someone coming from there, we welcome him without criticizing Judaism as something which is, a Jew is bad because he is a Jew. We will never accept that. This European history is a shame, and we'll never accept that. And I think that it's really important for me, because coming from uh, Europe and talking to you about this, he was a European. And as of, uh, uh, Murad Hoffman was saying, a gift to Islam coming from Europe. But it's also something which is quite important. He was very strong against the Zionist project, a very narrow-minded you know, political project. And this is why he came to Islam with this worldview. This was very important. It's his own journey to Islam. But by being critical towards the Zionist project, we should understand that in his understanding, his mindsets, something which has to do with the suffering of the Jews is something that he was respecting and that we respect as Muslims. This is part of us. We will never go from one. Instrumentalizing the extermination of the Jews is not acceptable to acknowledge the suffering is Islamic. So this is something which for me it's quite important as a starting point of the principle, the way we deal with people when they come to us as friends, as fellow human beings, or as fellow Muslims. It's an attitude of the mind, it's an attitude of the heart, is honesty and humility. And I think on that it's quite important. Then, as it was said, his personal journey it's also something which is quite important. It's a quest. He was looking for something. He was. And you know when he was rejected by his father because he converted to Islam, in fact what he was saying is that something happened to me that came to me as a robber during the night and stayed in me. This was the answer to my quest, the oneness of God. So he was experiencing this. And it's also from the starting point something which is quite important. It's not because you are a Muslim that you get it all. The quest is always there. You have to deepen and deepen and deepen your understanding. This is what he was saying. I discovered Islam. Islam is, it was in my heart. And then I have to think. I had to think and to think and to think. So Islam is light in your heart, thinking in your mind, ongoing thinking, ongoing critical thinking. And this is the way he was. It was the way by the central thing, which was quite important, I will come as a central word, which he was refusing uh, on this, is never go towards something which has to do with intellectual laziness. But this was true for his own journey, and this, we have to respect this as someone who uh, was blessed by, for us as Muslims, as the light coming from God telling him, this is the truth, come in. And he went and said, this is something that I, I didn't decide. It, it, it was in me, and then he was also able, you know, something which is quite important when he was in a train and then he was uh, very young. He, he became a Muslim, he was 26, but when he was very young and, and he saw signs that it's as if God was talking to him. You know, the signs are the elements plus meanings. So he was looking for meanings. This quest is quite important for us. And then through his life and thoughts, uh, uh, it's also something which is quite important. He passed away, he was 90. Uh, two, and the last years were full of meditation and sadness. And once again, it, came, it comes back to, to what I experienced myself in my family. I will never remember that a life of struggle and a journey, at the end it's quite important to look at the last years. Because sadness, meditation, what we did, this is something that I experienced in my family, with my own father, it was exactly the same giving all your life to a project, to, uh, to God, and then you come back to God at the end and you judge your own life with people, with human beings. 
and you understand better why the Quran is ending with a very short surah reminding us of the people five times. At the end, be cautious with human beings and come back to God. And, you know, doubt yourself as well. So this is something which he was assessing. And his own son, Talal Asad, who is now in the States, were talking about this last year, saying there was something here which was he was reassessing all this journey. And for us, it's also something which is assessing and trying to take from his thoughts things that are important for us. Just let me uh, uh, highlight a few points that are important for me in his own journey and then uh, something which is quite important. As someone who became a Muslim when he was young, 26, and, and then he went, I think it's quite important to understand where he uh, uh, was coming from. And as I said, it was said again, a Polish family, very committed uh, 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 Jewish family, his, uh, uh, with his family were rabbis and everything was connected to this and he was young and uh, this is something which is really important in his own understanding of Islam. He arrived, in, when he was 22, he went to the Middle East, he went to Jerusalem, to Palestine and he started to meet with Arabs. And you know what we, we got very often is that someone said once. It is said that it was people referring to Muhammad Abdu. In fact, we don't know really who said this, the first, saying, that's good that I met Islam before meeting Muslims. Because if I were to meet Muslims before Islam, I would ha never have been a Muslim. And the other side is uh, Muhammad Abdu saying something like this, but once again, we are not sure who said this. Say, when I arrived to Europe, I met Islam without Muslims, but when I came to the Muslim majority country, I met Muslims without Islam. So all this saying what? The discrepancy between what the Muslims are experiencing and the very message of Islam that we are all repeating. We are very critical. You know, the first uh, uh, critical people towards themselves about this are ourselves. So much so that very often we are you know, the victims of this. We don't see our community in a positive, constructive way because we are always repeating that this. We are very far from our ideals, which is true. But at the end, having said that, what are you going to do? What Muhammad Assad was doing is something which is quite important. He didn't meet Islam before Muslims, but he went and he met very ordinary Muslims. And through the, the people, he started to try to understand why they were living this very simple life. So this is something which is important. He saw from the very beginning the discrepancies, but there was something deep down that he was attracted to in his journey. So from human beings to the message behind, and this is something which is quite important, which means, in fact, you know, at the beginning he was a journalist. He was able to look at things. He was observing. He was pondering, which is the critical thinking, but also something coming from the heart. Because he said in the road to Mecca, it was a, a, a story of love. It was a question of love. So I would say that this is quite important here, is that sometimes we are very quick to criticize the communities and the Muslims, and saying, oh, they are far from Islam. But sometimes in the ordinary, natural way of Muslims living as Muslims, there is the secret of Islam. This is why sometimes, as a European, I'm reminding, I rem I'm reminding my, my fellow Muslims, say, be careful, your parents sometimes came with no knowledge of Islam, that the secret of Islam was in them. They gave you the seed, even though they didn't give you the thought. Something is there. And this is why he was very, very positive about this. He, it was an ambitious project for Muslims, because this is why Muslims were great because of Islam, because Islam is great, as it was said. And I think that on this, it's quite important to look at this journey, and it, it helps us to be very positive, much more positive than we are.